Hi everyone, my name is Abhi Sharma and I'm the Director of Product Management at Avamo. And today we're going to be discussing several runtime engines that power the Avamo platform. So Avamo has three engines that enable us to drive our vision of automating every conversation in the enterprise. A dialogue engine, a voice engine, and then a cognitive search engine. So in this video, we'll focus on the first one, the dialogue engine, and explore how it enables various features of conversational intelligence, such as multi-intent classification, dynamic slot filling, uh, disambiguation, and many more. Now, while we'll be discussing this engine in isolation, it's very important to keep in the back of our minds that all these engines, right, the dialogue, voice, and cognitive search, actually work in parallel to help Avamo's virtual assistants understand and fulfill user goals. Now, in the broadest sense, the Dialogue Engine automates key aspects of conversations by cleverly utilizing deep learning algorithms, context, and metadata. And it, this provides a great out-of-the-box experience for end users and reduces the amount of repetitive work that developers have to do. They can focus purely on selecting conversational flows from our pre-built libraries and configuring them to accomplish meaningful tasks. Now we'll see uh, many of these specific conversational intelligence pieces throughout today's video, but here's kind of a snapshot of some of the things that we'll talk about. The goals of the runtime engine are threefold, right? So the first is to be able to enable multi-turn adaptive conversations. Uh, think scheduling a doctor's appointment or checking the status of an order. Now the conversation could should be very comprehensive and yet very flexible so that users can jump around in the middle of the conversation as, as they wish. The second thing that we want to enable uh, is the context slash state engine. Context is key to providing a personalized user experience. Repeat users, uh, which specific channel they're coming from. Did the user reach the bot based on other activities on a website? The location of the user, the language of the user, right, etc. All of these have to be incorporated into the dialogue via the state engine. And the last goal of the dialogue runtime engine is contextual responses, which is of course the ability to create channel agnostic flows that can provide rich multimedia card responses, for example, on web, and then text responses on voice. Now this is something that's very often overlooked, but of course is, is, is very important. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the concept of multi-intent. We're going to switch into the platform. Uh, what you're seeing here is the back end. This is the Avamo dashboard, and we're inside of a, a, a virtual assistant, and you're seeing uh, these modules, these blocks. Uh, we call them skills or, or atomic use cases. So within conversational intelligence, multi-intent classification is the ability to detect simultaneous user goals, uh, triage, and order them based on dependencies, and then execute the respective workflows. All right, so let's see an example uh, of, the of how the Dialog Engine supports this feature. So I'm going to open up the simulator here. This is a virtual assistant. It's a US bank agent. It's a sample kind of example. Right? Uh, I can help you open an account, view your balance, and transfer funds. Okay, so it can do a couple of things for us. Let's come in here and say something like, I want to view my bank balance, then transfer some funds. Now what's going to happen is the system, the dialogue engine, is going to detect that there's multiple intents in this query, and it's going to triage them and then offer them one by one, right? So it looks like your query has multiple intents. What would you like to do? What would you like to start with? And so I can now say that I want to start with a balance inquiry. Okay, I can put in my bank account. All right, and now I know my bank balance. And then would you like to proceed with funds transfer? I can then proceed with the actual transfer of funds. I can put in my, my account number here and then move on. Of course, this can also be automated. All right, so hopefully this gives us an idea of how you can do multi-intent classification out of the box in the platform. Another key feature of the kind of conversational intelligence um, suite within the Dialog Engine is this concept of disambiguation. 
Uh, this is another virtual assistant, right? Where we've actually now embedded the assistant on a website. Uh, you can kind of get a feel for some of the different things that this assistant is capable of. But let's go ahead and open the, the web vid widget here. The assistant is introducing itself. It's an IT, ITSM assistant, service desk management, right? And it's telling me a, a couple of things that it can do. Disambiguation is a feature of the dialog engine that allows virtual assistants to clarify intents with lower confidence. Now, this is not this not only provides a better experience for me as the user, but also allows the assistant to learn over time. So, for example, I can come in and say account issue, and here it'll take a second, and then the assistant is going to come back with a response that indicates that there was a little bit of confusion as to which intent should be classified. It says, I'm, I'm not sure I understand. Did you mean any of the following, right? Did I mean I want to create an incident? Do I want to reset my password because there's an issue with my account? It, am, am I, is it the case that I want a new access? I, I want new access to an application. That's why that's the issue with my account. Or is it that I'm looking for the status of an account issue ticket that I filed earlier. All right, so all of these are plausible interpretations of this phrase, and that's where the system will automatically disambiguate and try to guide me to the useful uh, use case that, that, that might be of value to me. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is co-reference resolution, which is just a complicated term for a very subtle but important feature of dialog management. And it's often overlooked because human beings do it so naturally. So it's essentially the ability for a virtual assistant to understand references to previous concepts in a conversation. To, so to kind of see what I mean, let's see this feature in action. Again, this is now a different virtual assistant. You'll see that this assistant is actually deployed over phone as well as a web channel. So let's go ahead and test out the web simulator. Okay, it's, it's gonna introduce itself and say, how can I help you today? Now let's come in and say something like, I need Adobe Acrobat. So I'm asking it for uh, some software. It's understood what I'm looking for, okay? It knows that I'm looking for Adobe Acrobat. It seems to have found a couple of different versions of this. Now, what's interesting is, of course, I can click on these and, and figure out which one I want, or I can say, can you order the second one? Now, in this case, this is an example of co-reference resolution. Your request for Acrobat, which is the second one, has been placed and here's the ticket number. I can then go and kind of look at the ticket. Uh, but here's what's interesting. I actually just said, can you order the second one? This is a reference to the previous message and it's try I'm, I, I'm indicating that I would like the, the assistant here, Snowy, to order me a version of Acrobat, not Adobe Acrobat Pro. And so this is an example of co-reference resolution. Things like that, it, he, she, these are references to other nouns or other objects in a previous utterance, and the system here is, is going to be able to do this automatically to get me the right response and to move forward. All right, that, now the next example that we're going to be looking at is an example of dynamic slot filling. Uh, now, to talk about slots, you, you have to talk a little bit about entities. Entities are, of course, a fundamental building block of conversational AI and represent concepts in a user sentence or utterance, like the name of a company, uh, the type of enterprise application, right? Adobe Acrobat was an entity, healthcare specialties, pizza toppings, and so on. Slot filling is the ability for a virtual assistant to detect and then capture important entities. Now, Avamo's dialog engine allows our bots to fill slots one by one or all at once, and this dynamism makes conversations very flexible and reduces developer effort by orders of magnitude. All right, so let's see this in action to get a better feel. Okay, now this is a healthcare assistant, just another example uh, named Eve. Uh, it can schedule appointments, do some other things. Okay, how can I help you today? Great, let's come in and let's say, can you find a doctor for me? Okay, now the assistant says, what kind of care are you looking for? And gives, you, gives me a, a couple of examples. All right, well, I can say that I'm looking for dermatology. All right, now it's saying, can you narrow, can you narrow it down by location? Tell me which city that you're looking for. And it's remembered, right, the previous city that I provided. Uh, and that's in fact gonna be the case here. I'm looking for dermatologists 
perhaps in Denver. Okay, and now we get a, kind of a search and, and here's some results, uh, you know, several pr providers in the area that match my search criteria and sort of in this, in this card user interface. Now what's interesting here is that this, this took about three different steps, right? It's a multi-turn conversation. Now I can bypass all of that in one go by saying something like search for skin specialists in Denver. Now this is a single sentence. Now notice it didn't ask me for what kind of care am I looking for. It didn't ask me for the location. It was able to pick up all of these things in the same utterance and take me directly to the, the, the search uh, kind of response here in one go. And this is an example of dynamic slot filling, right? We're capturing data in the, in the single utterance instead of having to capture one by one these different, uh, these different elements. Okay, now that we've seen some of the capabilities of the runtime engine, let's look at the tooling. All right, so just like any other aspect of our platform, it's a little bit like peeling the layers of an onion. You can start with a low code, no code way, or jump right into writing custom logic uh, for doing contextual storage, right? So we do it both. Now there are two ways to design and build conversations in the platform, both of which can leverage all of these out of the box conversational intelligence pieces that we just saw that our dialogue engine provides. Conversational flows can either be imperative where we tell our dialogue engine exactly how conversations should look node by node or declarative, right? Where we tell the engine what information we wanna capture and we let it design the best conversation. We let it make the decisions. So let's take, let's, let's take a look at the second method to see how easy it is to define conversations in the platform. Now, we're gonna go inside one of these skills. This is a custom skill, a use case. Uh, and this is gonna be a pizza ordering agent, right? Pizza ordering bot. Let's go ahead and look inside. Okay, and you can see that it's fairly simple to set up. All we have to do is we have to add training utterances. So I can say something like order a pizza with onions, order a pizza, right? These are examples. Anything that you add here, it's teaching the system to generalize to variations of these utterances. Uh, and when we add an utterance, it's going to extract automatically the, the entities from that and then group them together. So now we've extracted the fact that in this, in this use case, typically what we're looking to capture are things like the size of the pizza, the toppings, right? And maybe the crust type. Uh, and then all we have to do is go into edit prompt details and provide a quick sentence as to how we would want to capture this data. So these two pieces of information are all it takes. The training phrases, right? That will, that will help the system understand you're looking for a pizza. And then within that, the entities are automatically extracted. And for each piece of data that we're trying to capture, we just need to provide how we want to ask for that. So how do we want to ask for size? We want to say something like, what size pizza would you like to order? And with that, you can actually now go into the assistant and start asking this assistant for, for various types of uh, uh, pizzas. All right, so let, let me come in. Hello, welcome. I can help you order a customized pizza. Uh, I can say that I want to order a pizza. Okay, what size of pizza do you want? Uh, I'll go ahead and say that I want a small pizza. What toppings would you like to add? Let's keep it simple, let's say cheese. Okay, now it's asking me for the crust. Um, and you can choose from some of these options here. Uh, let's go ahead and pick one. So we'll say pan pizza, that sounds pretty good. Okay, thank you for placing your order for a regular size pan pizza, right? So small apparently is equivalent to regular. With cheese, it will be delivered to you in the next 30 minutes. Now, that was a step-by-step -step fashion. Notice that I didn't have to design the conversation or the flow of the conversation. The system is automatically asking me for the various data points that I need to place a, an order or place a request. Now, we can make this a little bit more interesting. I can say something like order a small pizza with cheese and onions. And now notice it's not going to ask me for the type of toppings or the type of size. It's going to go directly to asking me for the crust because that's the one piece of missing information. What's more, I can actually go back and edit dynamically some of the other things that are captured. So let's say I changed my mind and now I want it to be a large pizza. I can then say, can you make it a large? Now notice this is an example of co-reference resolution, right? I just said it 
What am I referring to in this it example? Well, I'm referring to the pizza. And in fact, I'm referring to the specific entity of size. And so the system is understood that when I say something like large, I'm talking about the size and it's gone ahead and updated the size entity, not the toppings or the, the type of crust. And it and of course goes back and says, all right, what type of crust are you looking for? I can even go ahead and say, and add pineapples. And now it's going to add pineapples, not as a size, it's not updating the size. In fact, it understands that toppings are going to be things that are that can have multiple toppings, right? You can you can maybe only have one size, but with toppings you can have multiple, and so it's added toppings as opposed to updating the toppings, which is another kind of benefit here. So now I can end with, uh, great. Let me let's do you know sort of the same thing. Let's do pan pizza, and now we get kind of a confirmation for a large pan pizza with onions, cheese, and pineapple. Uh, it'll be ready in the next 30 minutes. And that's an example of how easy it is to build a conversation, multi-turn dialogue, with some of the conversational intelligence uh, elements that we discussed uh, earlier on. And there you have it, right? So this was an overview of our dialogue engine, which is one of three runtime engines that enable Vamos IVAs to automate conversations for the enterprise. Hope you found that interesting, and please make sure to visit avamo.ai or our YouTube channel for more information. Thank you very much.